Hi, and welcome to the Margie and Lisa Show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson. And we are delighted that you could join us. We hope you'll call in or email us and become part of the conversation. I want to start out by giving a huge woohoo um, regarding the Thai soccer team coming out of the coming case. out of the hospital oh, because the they hospital, yeah, yeah they are they've been they were out of the cave yeah. um, and they look good I about saw a week it. ago yep. came out quick more quickly than we thought yeah and then today they actually came out they looked healthy they were in their soccer uniforms yeah and they are going home with their parents because they've been in quarantine yeah um, and the coolest thing was I mean one of the coolest things was or maybe three of the coolest things um, some of them, I think 10 of them, no, there are 12. So eight of them want to be pro soccer players. Yeah. The <laughs> other four want to be Navy SEALs. Yeah, that's amazing. And they drew a picture in honor of the Navy SEAL who yeah, died trying to huge. help them. So that yeah. was just, it's amazing. Blew my mind. I mean, when you look at the track, I have, I have my PAVI license and I've dived, I've done a lot of open water dives and things like that. And it's, it's really like that's a scary, scary it rescue. Is. Yeah. I mean, like when I was looking at that, I'm like, ooh. And they, they, yeah, you know, they're not swimmers. Yeah. They thought they were biking. And it was like an hour-long hike. They yeah. thought they would just go in and check out the cave. The cave got flooded. They got stuck. Right. And the news report today was saying they weren't really that scared. Yeah. Because they thought someone would come any minute. Right. The coach They'd was find cheering the box, them up. Bikes. Yeah. And then they said that they were dreaming about food because they were hungry. Aww. So I'm just so glad. Me so too. We're a little and yeah, yeah, congratulations Aww. to the teams that got them out of there and actually the nurses and doctors that helped them Such inside. A and well, I it mean, was it, it was really a felt like a worldwide team. effort, even though it was obviously focused in Thailand. Right. Because we were all was, praying and whatever, right. you know. Yeah, that's that's so, incredible. Thank but, God. I mean, you don't know. I mean, the weather is. We had. Oh. Typhoon rains yesterday. Well, I, I am my, uh, <laughs> trying to drive my car, and your car's lower than mine. Yeah. I know I went through foot deep water on yeah. Route 9 and a couple of those oh, underpasses. Yeah. Well, and I just figured I'm going to go flooded. for it because yeah. if I go slow, I yeah. might not come out. Yeah, so you I have to make a wake. No, you're I not did. supposed I, to drive through. No, I, yeah, did. I like, did. I went too fast. But what do you made, do? You start backing up on Route 9? I didn't know. Yeah. No, I know. It's crazy. There was flooding in Worcester and Rhode Island and Boston. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, so our topics for tonight, first topic is going to be the talking Mueller. about the Mueller investigation yeah. and uh, the 12 indictments that came down. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Trump's reaction yep. and then his the other reaction and then what he said and then what he changed his wording. Yeah. So what do you have? So Lisa printed there out a so very much. extensive... <laughs> Well, actually, PBS.org has actually a full timeline since 1996 all the way up to today of Ooh. all of the interactions, the the really proof. It actually, Celia, my daughter was funny. She's like, is this good, credible information? I said, PBS, public oh, broadcast sta sta yeah. is, is very credible. Yeah. And it was, you know, to me, I was just, you know, and we watch, we get tidbits here and there. And it honestly it was so hard to even fathom all the history that has gone Unbelievable. on. Unbelievable. With Manafort, with, you know, like with all of the people, Flynn, I mean, we're talking, you know, decades right. of, of interactions with the Russians mm -hmm. and, and people that were associated with Trump and with Trump's family, mm -hmm. you know, and ironically, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that came up, you know. So it was 96 Clinton? Who was president in 96? It would have been the first Cl yeah, right. Clinton, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, a long time ago. So, I mean, there it was interesting. So, filtering through all this information, and I think everybody's having the same issue, um, really trying to make sense of it, you know, because it's, you know, he's like, I have nothing to do with the Russians, but then when you start looking at this, yeah. just Google PBS um, Russian timeline, yep. and you'll get literally 100 pages of an Excel spreadsheet that actually breaks <laughs> it all down. So to me, I was, you know, I read Excel all the time. I was trying to sort it and try to figure it out, but it has, you know, the dates that are between um, the major events, the investigations. They have the list of all the proven Russian hacking. Yep. They have all the um, Trump um, 
information that he stated about Russia, um, proven meetings with Russia when he's traveled with Russia, uh, Michael Cohen. Yes. Um, the work that Michael Cohen's done on behalf of Trump. Right, right. And um, trying to connect um, business. Sure. Um, Set up negotiations deals for with, Trump Corporation. Yep, with, and then uh, Manafort and Gates. Um, there's a whole list of that. Mm -hmm. Kushner, Jared Kushner, of course, Trump's um, son in law. Um, um, J Trump Jr., Flynn, Papadopoulos. Yep. So what were um, so the, it goes on that, and on. Does, Sessions, Stone, others. I mean, so does has, that talk about the indictment specifically? Well, that not in this this particular spreadsheet, but the indictments. Yeah. So there were twelve Russians that were accused of trying to interfere with the two thousand sixteen presidential okay. election. Okay. And then today, an indictment came down. Uh, Maria um, yep. Butana. Yep. 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 If I said her name correctly, she was, you know, definitely, you Part know, of that. yeah, held as a Russian agent, and right. she's very closely connected with the NRA. And that story, which is kind yeah, of, and let me just interject. Yeah, um, please, guys, if you're there, we'd love it if you would yeah, call in, tell us input, what you heard, we're be throwing tell out us <laughs> what you think. Yeah. Um, the information is on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I heard about Maria. I think it was Butinaya. Um, yeah. She apparently was a student, mm -hmm. and then somehow uh, wasn't identified as a Russian agent. Yep. And was, but also somehow got invited to national press yeah. corps and, with the intent with of Trump, influencing, yeah. you know, influencing the, the Republican or whichever person she could get her. Uh, right. hands on and, she and had, trading sex for right. influence. Right. So well, and she was very closely associated and promoted the National Rifle Association. Yeah. Um, so that you know, and there were there was money that came through the NRA to Trump. So they are looking at those ties as well. Sure. But yeah. those twelve Russians again, um, you know, it. it <laughs> It was kind of interesting that this happened two days before Trump was to meet with Russia, mm -hmm. and Russia, um, you know, the press and conference with, with Putin and with Trump. Mm -hmm. First of all, he says, "Oh, I, I'm quite sure that Russia had nothing to do with this." Right. And then he kind of backtracked well, again today and said, "Well, mm -hmm. it was wood instead of wouldn't." And uh, yeah, he's, you, you didn't understand my words. I misspoke. Right. right. So what I have, um, <laughs> so I I printed out a transcript. Of Meet the Press oh, uh, on July 15th, talking about the Russian hacking. Yep. And that was from Sunday. So this all happened uh, uh, the third Friday the 13th. Yes. And then, um, and well, then, like, okay, right around there. So nugget. three days after the indictment, Trump suggested American intelligence agencies were wrong to believe Russia intervened in the 2016 election. Then he said, we have both made mistakes. Right. And when he started to talk about our mistakes. We've all been foolish. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then when he talked about our mistake, he focused on United States' mistake being the investigation. Yeah. You know, and didn't talk about annexation of Crimea. Right. Or, or the, the bombing to, the of the Malaysian airline. And killing <laughs> the, you know, trying to attempt to kill the Russian spies yeah. in, our, in our country and then in, in England. And then Paul Ryan's response was, there is no question that Russia interfered yeah. in the election and continue attempts to undermine democracy here and around the world. So mm -hmm. Paul Ryan took a stance. Yeah. And then, so Mitchell on Saturday, yeah. on Saturday, yeah. Trump blamed Obama for not responding to the Russian cyber attack. So everything, you know, it's never about yeah. his mistakes, and he cannot seem to. But um, we're all foolish. I mean, I, I mean, he never concedes to anything. But on yeah. worldwide television, national and, television, right. he's saying, well, we were foolish, and I don't see how Russia, you know, they're very right. strong. Well, some, you know, I would and like Russia's to know. celebrating. Have you seen the of news in Russia? Are. Of course. I mean, like. Because it's a win for Putin. Yeah. So, the, so Trump's response also, quote, I call it the rigged witch hunt, and it really hurts our relationship with Russia. Right. Why? Does he, why does he want this great relationship with Russia, who is clearly not our ally? Well, and then he wants to pull out a NATO. I yep. mean, he goes in and oh, fights with because, NATO. Because that's what Putin has been angling for for years, well, to separate. Well, to me, that's very scary. I mm -hmm. mean, that's like a perfect opportunity. And, not, and this is just me throwing yep. out ideas. Yep. But, you know, like Cold War, you know, we have an enemy there. It's a proven enemy. It's been proven that and they're hacking our election. They have nuclear right. weapons. Mm -hmm. 
they're causing discourse in our country. Yep. And and that's a threat. I mean, that's a credible threat. And then he goes to NATO, all of our allies that would back us up in an actual and offends them. Yeah, war or right. or whatever, and offends them. So is he opening the door for Putin to march into Europe? Or I mean, like what I don't is honestly? Work. Yeah, I mean, so like the, what is the some of the comments you know, in here have a yeah, little go bit ahead, of yeah. light to shine on that. So um, the comment from. Um, Chuck Todd, who is the co the person running this the uh, show on uh, Meet the Press, yep. said what he did was reaffirm his claim that there was a witch hunt and tweet that the Russian criminality took place during Obama administration, which were failed to respond. Yeah. What the president did not do was postpone the summit on Monday right. with Vladimir Putin. And what he signaled was he may trust Putin's denial over the fun findings of United States intelligence agencies and our Justice Department, and the big question is why? Right. And, um, you know, then he says, um, Putin, he's not my enemy. Maybe someday he'll be my friend. Yeah. And then, you know, Putin really feels and feels strongly that he did not meddle in our election. These right. are all quotes. I believe Putin because he said strongly. Yes, what I'm I, saying. He, he was very deliberate in what he said that, that they did not meddle. So I believe well, Putin that's the over quote. U.S. intelligence. That's right. He I mean, you don't believe your own government. Who but do even, you work even, for? even if someone, <laughs> just the wording of that, he really feels that way. That doesn't mean it's true. Right. It's just feels? A feels? Mm, yeah. So yeah. anyway, then here, um, John Huntsman, who was the former ambassador to China, was worried a little bit about the fact that it's a one-on-one -on -one with Trump and Putin. Right. Close no doors. No one in the room no who could give a little, hey, by the way, that's not true, or hey, right. you don't want to agree Advisors. with that. Right. Yeah. So he's saying, the, um, Huntsman says, I don't think the details are a surprise to folks who followed this. It makes almost 30 Russians who've been rolled up by the Mueller investigation. Yeah. So, so all of these people, um, and then the bigger picture is we need to hold the Russians accountable for what they did, right. and then and what they're doing to Europe, right. because Russia touches 11 time zones. It touches Asia. It touches Middle East. It touches Western Europe. Yep. You know, it's already yeah, it's gone into massive, Crimea yeah. and annexed Crimea against UN and and right. uh, you know any any And let's reasonable. play devil's advocate for a minute. Yeah. So what would Trump say if Canada did this? Oh, he So would. so it's a national threat. Who knows threat. what he would say? So so it's a national threat that that we have to have tariffs against Canada, okay? Because that's that's what his excuse was. No tar no tariffs against Russia or no trade, you know, issues that are going on moving forward with Trump. But he says, so what if England said that? What if Germany said that? What if yeah. France said that? What if Canada, what if Mexico did any of these things right. that Russia has been proven to do? Right. How would he react? Well, you know? here, here's the thing. <laughs> well, I, and and um, I'm sorry if it sounds like we're complaining about Trump. So we would love to hear anyone yeah, who has yeah. something that could help us yeah. explain this. Please, yeah. I understand that that Russia is a huge power, and it would be great if we could be allies. But, he can't but be. he's been proven to not be uh, in anyone's best interest but his right. own. Since so if, you, if anyone's since. watching and they can help us understand this a little bit, um, it looks to to me and obviously Lisa that it makes no sense right. to become an ally to Putin unless Trump has business interests well, and, today, and private and will after his presidency go on to have this warm relationship. Right. But if you just look at this, I don't know that, that it, it just seems to me that it's hard for Donald Trump to be a president and remove himself from that right. conflict of interest right. that he has. Because he's thinking like a businessman. So let's play devil's advocate again. So, so Trump vehemently denies that there was he did not win the election fair and square. No, he okay. he denies. <laughs> he denies. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. I'm so he he says that. He says yeah, he this won is, it fair well, and square. we're getting twisted in yeah, all yeah. the nonsense. It's yeah, hard yeah. to keep track of it. I know. So so he says that, and that that was say his defense. Well, it's an ego. He doesn't want to you know, admit to anybody that, you know, he, the Russians were the reason why he's in office. And Putin even said in the interview, they said, do you want, did you want Trump to win? He says, yes. Well, and yeah. that's okay. He can have that opinion. Yeah. 
But, but again, like, how does that... I mean, this man walks around and is like a bull in a china cabinet with all of these people across the world. It'd be then, hard to get a bull in a china cabinet. Yeah, or closet, cabinet, china closet. Shop. So um, anyway, but he goes all over the world and, and breaks stuff and criticizes no, we, we people. All, we agree to that. Yeah. But I mean, like that was his excuse, or he was—he didn't use the words correctly. It, it just doesn't make sense, and that's yeah. the thing. And and then this is a, here's another quote. Now they have Senator Mark Warner mm -hmm. uh, from Democratic Senator of Virginia, top Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Yeah. His comment—I'm just—I'm yeah. just paraphrasing a few things. Um, he says, "I'd feel a lot better if Ambassador Huntsman." We're sitting in on the meeting because yeah. he's an ambassador and he's got some history. Right. We know Trump doesn't do prep work. He goes in and wings it. Yep. Um, just, that's what he did with Kim Jong Un. Mm, yeah. He ended up saying everything was okay, and, and, and then Kim we Jong found out. Wonderful too. And and we found out it's not the case. We didn't get concessions from them. We didn't get agreements right. to denuclearize. There was nothing specific. Right. So maybe we got nothing. Then he says, in Putin, you've got a trained KGB agent who does his homework. Yeah. So. You know, I, I mean, even if he he didn't collude with the Russians, there's he's innocent and in all of this. Yeah. As our president and as someone who's representing the United States of America, doesn't he have the wherewithal no. or the nope. the competency or nope. the allegiance to us to no. do some work like we do for our show? Mm. Yeah, um, I know, right? To do to come in with some actual data instead of well he feels that he's yeah, telling no, the all. truth or you know it's, we have a great it's relation. the art of the deal buddy. yeah 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 so right here yeah. um another thing mark warner said um the idea that two leaders of two great nations are meeting absolutely makes sense yes I agree. but what we have now is there's russian intervention in the elections where they hacked into the democrats and the democrat officials emails released them to benefit Trump and hurt Clinton, yep. where they intervened in 20 states' electoral systems. They used social media in ways that were unprecedented, massively intervened. They are an adversary. Right. And this particular president has been reluctant to call that activity out and call out Putin as a bad actor. Right. So in, for that reason, if nothing else, you need so, to have someone so else in the room. Let's just switch this up again, and this mm -hmm. is the way I try to think of it. So what if we did that to Russia? So what if we went in and... Oh, I don't think we even need to go there. Yeah. It's clearly a mistake. But I'm, I'm just saying, you know <laughs> what I mean? So like, how do you turn the other cheek when you... Like, if we did the same thing, what would Russia do to us? I mean, what would that... What would be the repercussions? Do you think they would they would go to... Putin would come to America and say, you know what, you're awesome. I believe you. But the KGB told me that... No, he, because yeah. Putin isn't like that. He's, yeah. No, he has no time for that. But I'm just so saying... So here, he just doesn't some, want anything you know, from... No. Yeah. So Senator Warren, all, Warner also said, <laughs> it appears a rather strange coincidence that the very day Trump calls the Russians to hack, you know, it, publicly... Oh, it uh, you know, go ahead and hack their emails. Yeah. And we all heard him say that during it's the, in this, it's during in this the election. Yeah. So go ahead, you know, hack their emails. Yep. So Trump calls on the Russians to hack the emails. That very day, the <laughs> Russian spies actually tried to take that action. March 2016. Exactly. Staffers at the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee opens phishing email, gives hackers access access to House campaign strategies and personal contact information. Yep. That was March 2016. And then that call came, the call for Russians to act came a few weeks after Donald Trump Jr. Yep. and the campaign manager and Kushner yep. sat down with Russian agents in the Trump Tower yep. where Russian agents had offered dirt on Hillary Clinton, yep. even though they claimed that they were trying to figure out how to do some adoption. That's, you know, we know finally that was not true. And then that in between the meeting and when it was set up, the Russian operative set up a website called dcleaks.com yep. literally the day before the Trump Tower meeting. So DC yep. Democratic Committee. Yep. Obviously. Yep. So, you know, well, just and, everything and is just so in the paper, the trail is so obvious. Right. You know, obvious. Well, March 31st, 2016, Trump meets with his national security team, including Jeff Sessions, Papadopoulos, and later he could arrange a meeting with Putin and says later he would like to arrange a meeting with Putin. Well, mm -hmm. you know. well he's trying to deal with, you know, yeah. again, thinking about a business and the art of the deal, um, that would 
that would that was m- April. mean that there's you know he should go meet with the CEO of the other company. Right. You know that's that's understandably a, a, a thing for him to do. Right. Um, but yeah. nope. All right, on Facebook, Colleen asks, is there any chance that he wants that Trump wants to be friends with Putin in order to get a better deal on oil? It could be. Oil. Yeah, okay, so Colleen on Facebook, thank you, Colleen, asks, yeah, thank you. does Trump want a better deal on oil sure, there's from always Putin? A, he wants a better deal on something. It? Right, so yeah. exactly. Yeah. It would be, and that's a really good thought, Colleen. Yeah. So that's the point is, what is it? Right, if, what if is that's it what he wants, that's say making that. him say that. not come forward with, you know, why can't he just say, look, Um, we should try to get along because we want this. Right. So, and there were deals made because on Russian news today, it said that Russia is starting to look forward to what was promised to them through the meeting and to implement it. Oh, great. Yeah. So, I mean, there were things promised, but as the president, doesn't he want to, you know what I mean? So David says, and rightly so, the pundits and leaders you reference are all on target. It's so difficult to be outraged by outrageous behavior. Yeah. You know, what do you do with that? Thank right. you, David. So well, what it do you seems do? so absurd. I mean, it's it's so, as I was reading this today, and of course, I follow this because I watch the news and yeah. I read and I try to stay educated, um, but it it is so outrageous, you almost can't believe it. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know... E- the guy that streaks through a baseball game, you're just like, I can't believe that guy does that. But <laughs> they do, you know? So this guy is doing this, and it, it really, 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 really feels like he's not in the best interest of our country. Well, he's, And if he is, if he's looking for an oil deal, us. if he's tell looking he's for, doing. you know, trade, is yeah. he looking for a truce with no more hacking? Yep. Is he looking for, say, hey, you leave our stuff alone, we'll mm-hmm. leave your stuff alone, whatever. So here's something interesting. <laughs> Chuck Todd says, while some Republicans like John McCain have urged Trump to use the Russia indictments to get tougher with Putin yep. or cancel the summit, right. which he did not do. The leadership, the Republican leadership, was mostly silent at that point. Yeah. Mitch McConnell provided no public reaction uh, to the indictments from Friday. This is on Sunday. They're talking about this. Yep. House Speaker Paul Ryan released the statement, you know, and he really stood up for it. Um, so, and then they're talking about, you know, what's happening in the Arctic. So maybe it's about Colleen's to Colleen's point. They're trying to drill in the Arctic, right. which is connected to Russia. Right. So maybe they need to go through Russia somehow to invade that Arctic right. res- preservation area. Sure. That and that's know, we're happening to- all over the United States right now with things mm-hmm. being lifted as well. So it's mm, I, 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 I. it's just it's it's crazy. So we agree. Yeah. Um, we would love to hear. It, you know, Colleen's point is good. Maybe it's oil. Um, maybe we should all go solar. I don't know. Ride bicycles. <laughs> but at least state it. I mean, as yeah. the president of the yeah. United President of the United States, sense. tell us why you went there. You you went to NATO and you brag about, right. oh, I came out of NATO with a great deal and they're going to start paying their fair share. Right. And we're going to do all this. You came out of Russia. What did right. you come out of Russia with? Exactly. And, and we deserve to know. I mean, right. like if you're going there on our behalf. On yep. our behalf, remember, you're the president of the United no, no, no. States. Let us know why, what you came out of it. You're very, you know, forthward, right, with saying what what you've done and how yeah, awesome no, you we, are. No, I think we agree. Yeah. And so here, um, <laughs> Chuck Todd says, Trump, you know, so if he gives in to what Putin's asking, yeah. why, first of all? Right. But second of all, and what Putin is may it? ask to take American troops out of Syria, which we need to keep that area secure, yeah, sure. to protect the other community. Yeah. Yep. And then he may ask to lessen the sanctions that we put in there due to his annexation of Crimea. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there are, there are other things that we have in place to try to protect. We have and leverage. that's what NATO, the, the organization, the, the alliance of nations is, yeah. if one is under attack, the others come in and help. Right. So if we if we isolate ourselves from NATO, which Russia would love us to do, then we're even more of vul- you know, then we would be vulnerable. It just doesn't make For sense. For someone that plays the game of risk, it's a classic I risk love tactic. Risk. It totally is. You know, it's a classic tactic to yep. divide, conquer, art of war, any of the basic stuff about war. 
it's it's on the world stage right now. And I wish it just sorry. was a game. Yeah, me too. Me <laughs> and too. on that note, yes, we, uh, were, we could talk about this break. for days. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, let's just all hope it all turns out well somehow. I yeah. don't know, and we'll see you back in a couple minutes. Thank you. Is this cool? Is this cool? This is cool. This week on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. Still remember all those days on TV. Without the chemicals, life wouldn't be. I guess that's true, and I guess I could see how we can have fun with technology. Hi. So now we're going to turn to a subject that's very relaxing very and calming. Serene. We're going to talk about your favorite beaches. <laughs> Um, we'll we have some. We have a list of Massachusetts beaches. I have a list of Massa of New England beaches. I know where I used to go when I was a kid that I loved, or yeah. not just a kid, uh, college, and now. So um, please call us or email. Let us know what your favorite beach is, was, will be, you and know what the qualities are of a good beach. Right. So no, it's funny. I of course was googling it, and I'm a freshwater girl because I'm from the mountains. So I don't do. I mean, and I love ocean beaches, but I kind of tend to go to freshwater beaches. And every time you Google it, it comes up with all of the the Parks. beaches. Yeah. And oh my God, yeah. we have that. I found the best hundred beaches. Nice. Hundred beaches, and there are many, many in many, Massachusetts. Many, yeah, hundred yes. more. Yes. And I was just like an on many I've been to. But I was just like, oh my God. And then I found on the DCR website, it has the state ponds and freshwater beaches. Right, and the parks. And the parks. Yeah. So it was just like, to me, I was like, oh my God, why am I not going to beaches all the time? Well, I it, mean, and I go to Hockington State Park and National say, State Park like yeah. probably twice a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we so, have sand. So Hockington alone yeah. has Sandy Beach, which the kids yep. love. And I used to take my kids there and when we were little. And two beaches at Hockington State Park. And then Park. Hockington State Park. And then Whitehall and, doesn't really have a beach. Right. But, but you it, can boat on yeah. Whitehall. And Whitehall is surprising. Yeah. Because it looks, oh. when you go by, you see a parking lot. Okay, fine, boat ramp. Oh, it's yeah. huge. But once you get on that There's lake, it's amazing. There's a rock to jump off of. There's islands. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So I, the I number one beach in New England, <clears throat> and I have 10 best beaches, yep, is I saw, yeah. a beach I have not been to. So if you've been there, let us know. It's called Goose Rocks Beach. Yep. In Kennebunkport, Maine. Have you been there? I not, no. But I, I saw that it was on there. And Maine beaches are amazing. I've yeah. been to Maine beaches, but yeah. Colleen says York. Yes. York, yep. Yep. <laughs> York is a beautiful beach. And yeah, they don't they have I've been um, there. rides and, and yeah, it's like an old things. carnival. Almost yeah, like yeah, where yeah. Bear Beach was yeah, in the eighty carousel. years ago, yeah. So Goose Rocks Barrier Reef gives this beach super soft white sand and gentle breezes and a hot spot for locals lesser known to tourists so that's probably why i mean it's not yeah it's a main place i guess right so in they york know. beach every i mean yeah kinda, there's a lot of and no lifeguard and but it's mellow surf which is nice because some places like i just heard that um horse Neck beach has riptide which i didn't yep, know they had a riptide. Yeah, my daughter was just down there yeah so um and then they have a nice sandwich place and um a snack place and then so one th side note on that i was um at my summer job we talk i'm a nature counselor and we were talking about feathers and birds and Aww. so I was, every time i brought up the gull feather the seagull feather i said and be careful yeah. where you hold your french fries 
right. because those where you you know beaches oh, yeah. means seagulls means they if you're holding a french fry too far away right they're gonna dive yeah so we used to take celia's grandfather on yeah. her dad's side and he he was in a nursing home and we would pick him up and take him to revere beach because he was oh. a, he, italian he loved the sun nice. and he grew up in medford nice and we'd take him there <laughs> celia was two or three yes. and he has a, his lobster bowl which he oh loved. yeah 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 and he's sitting in his wheelchair he's just enjoying yep. the sun and yep. celia's chasing all yep. the the seagulls, and all of a sudden, a seagull dives down and literally, I know, like grabbed the whole plate. And That's the what they do. Yeah, I mean, they he it trashed it everywhere, but. It didn't get it all, but I was like, oh, yeah, seagulls. Yeah, they do. And that yeah. happened to my one of my kids or two, yeah. French fries. Yeah. And the seagull, right oh, yeah. there. In the... So anyway, <laughs> Samantha says, Craigville Beach on Cape Cod, beautiful. Yes. I love that beach. Yeah, it and is then, beautiful. Um, and it's on the Cape, so, yeah. you know, and it's I think it's it's mellow waves, too. It's not yeah, too it too many waves, beautiful sand. I like and to And I'm rock. a wave chaser. So I'm a like, rock I like... picker-upper. Oh, Rocks and shells, yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Like, all the, the reviews of the beach, it said, it's scavenging or you know like and apparently that's rocks and but i love, I love waves that. so like wealthy beach is amazing for waves yeah. salisbury beach do you is amazing do that do you I surf. boogie board oh yeah surf, surf. Yeah. yeah so and i like to body surf too yeah. and then newport beach is amazing yeah. for surfing so first do, beach first beach first yes beach, yeah yeah in newport so. so then so john says almost any cape cod beach and i think that's true right and the jersey beaches so yeah. cape may that beautiful area cape yeah. may all those and um, James says, I miss Liam's Onion Rings. Where is that? I'm not sure. What that, I don't know if that's the name of a beach or... It must be a restaurant. I think. Nasa Beach. Oh, Beach. Oh, oh Nasa Nasa Beach. Beach. Nice. Okay, so Nasa... So Nasa <laughs> Beach, who cares about the beach? Just go there for the Onion Rings. Well, it's like going to Kelly's on, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Revere yeah. Beach. So yeah. that was like, you know, when I first moved here from Idaho, everybody's yeah. like, you got to go to Kelly's in Revere Beach, mind you. This was 1987. I've never been there. No, thanks. So it was like the big Not going hair to and the cruising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's so different I now, know, but it was fun. like so funny. And coming from Idaho, I'm like, oh, my God, this place is awesome. <laughs> you, got a, you got a full picture of yeah. Boston right <laughs> exactly. there. Exactly. So number two is Footbridge Beach in Agonquit, Maine. So that's oh, two main, two main yeah. for the first and second beaches. And that one has um, a postcard, perfect fishing harbor, and a Gunkwood Playhouse. And I've actually been to see a play there. It's really nice. Um, and just a lot of little amenities in the, in the town of Agunquit. Um And then third is Mohegan Bluffs. Block Island, Rhode Island. Ah. So you have to take a ferry to get out to Block Island, which I have not done. And the, um, the beaches are, or the islands off of Massachusetts are off Boston. Are exactly, yes. Obviously, Vineyard Nantucket and, and, yes. and Vineyard. And that's similar to this one. So it's kind of wild and, and yeah. rocky and, and and I don't want to say deserted. And North Shore. North Shore, there's the yes. singing beach when yeah, you walk yeah. on Manchester by the sea. Ipswich. It squeaks, yeah, the, the um, Crane's Magnolia Beach. Magnolia or Manchester. Yeah, and yeah, then Manchester. Plum Island and Newburyport. Right. And I work up there all the yes, time. So I kind of wander around and like Good Harbor is just yeah, I love beautiful. Good it's Crane's doing. Beach is the yeah, one. Yeah, and then week. Rockport is very rocky yeah, I love and that. rough, and it's it's just and Beautiful. you, I mean, you look at the Sandy Massachusetts the one in coastline or the New England coastline. There is like uh -huh. just like so coast. much. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, and I mean, those of you that it's to Route the, One that goes, I think, along. The oh coast. yes, all the way up. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's interesting. Like you go out west, and there's beaches like that, but they don't have all those little notches and knobs and all the stuff that we have. You mean California? Yeah, California, coast? Oregon. Oh. It, 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 you have it, but it's like more open. So it's it's not. You don't have all these it's, little notches and nubs and. Is it sand? Is it um, rocky? A lot of it's yeah, rocky yeah, yeah, yeah. and some sandy, but yeah. I've been up and down um, all those beaches because I grew up there. Mm. But it's but for some reason the East Coast. I was thinking about it as I was thinking about beaches. We have all these little inlets and bays and, um, cramp, you know, brackish areas and like all this. Tide stuff. pools. My yeah. kids love love looking at the tide pools in Rockport and Gloucester. Yeah. Yeah, and, good and, Ivory, and yeah. Newport. Yeah. So Hammonasset Beach in Madison, Connecticut, oh, which I've not I didn't been know to. About that. Connecticut's largest public beach is it also its most beloved for good reason. Two miles of powdery white sand and calm, wow. Long Island Sound waters. Lots to do for the active beach goer. Link the boardwalk to stroll, hiking trails, places to fish, on site camping. I might be going there. I and know now like, I'm like I'm and saying. And there's this a, list. a Meg's Point Nature Center with nature walks. 
um, family reptile and water life touch tank. Yep. Yay! Fun. Yeah, so that's Hemanasa Beach. And there's actually, right in the city of Boston, there is a great beach. I have a friend that lives in East Boston, and we go to the beach right there. Yeah. And, and that's, that's an well, amazing... Well, Nahant. Yeah, Nahant and, is beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there is 40 steps Nan in Nahant. Nantasket. Yeah, in Long Beach, Gloucester. So uh -huh. we're, and all the Boston beaches are Carlson yeah. Beach in South Boston, Constitution Beach in East Boston, Lovells Island, Boston Harbor Islands. Which is the Am one that they run into and do that in the winter? Oh, that's um, that's in um, Castle Island. That's <laughs> Blazer Bay in, in, in um, South Boston. And okay. then Spectacle so, Island, which I've been to. Yeah. We went out there and actually saw a Shakespeare play there. And I didn't know Dorchester had a beach, Teen and Beach. Cool. So like it was I was like wow you know like it's it's you don't think of it because you see city but there's exactly there's, it's all over the place yeah so um Jenna's Beach in Rye New Hampshire is number six which Ooh. I've never heard of but I have been up to Rye it's along the coast again it's yeah. beautiful and that's just 18 miles oh New Hampshire has 18 miles of coastline saltwater beach is limited yeah but Rye is a beautiful, it's Portsmouth. between Hampton yeah. and Portsmouth. Right, Hampton. Um, yeah, and big it's a beach up there, yeah. Yeah, and then second beach in Middletown, Rhode Island, which is, I think, the Newport one. Yes. Yeah, the, and yes, the first beach is Newport, second beach yep. is Middletown. Yeah. But it's right next to Newport. It's, it's yeah. beautiful, yeah. And then um, Great Point in Nantucket, and um, num that's number eight. Number nine, Cahoon Hollow Beach in Wellfleet. I've never heard of that. Oh, but they I've have been high there. dunes. That's beautiful. I love. I've Hollow. been to all the Wellfleet beaches Wellfleet. in there. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Beach. And there's the beachcomber. Oh, a yep. lot of people love that. Yep. So Live you gotta music, get a t-shirt to show you've been there. That's a great place to surf because there's actually yep. awesome beachcomber. surf there. Yeah. Yep. Live music and a memorable sunset. I gotta go there too. <laughs> I know. I know. When are we gonna work? We gotta go to no, beaches. Yeah. And it's, yeah, so. You need to relax. And actually, so what do you have in Massachusetts? Besides so South Coast. So there's some, obviously you know Martha's Vineyard has a mm. bunch of beaches. Yeah. Nantucket. There's South Shore. Tons of South Shore beaches. Mm -hmm. Obviously Cape beaches. Yep. I used um, to go to Duxbury because my grandparents lived down there. Oh, Duxbury sure. Beach. Duxbury Bay and is we could beautiful. race. Um, Hermit, her, horseshoe crabs. Yes, yes, which are cool. Well, <laughs> very, very um, Jurassic yeah, looking. Of, yeah. But actually, so it was, I go to the south to work a lot. In the south coast, there is uh, Fort Phoenix Beach Where's State that? Reservation in Fairhaven. Okay. And I guess it's really hidden. I've been to Horse Neck Beach in Westport, which is beautiful. Yes. And, with, with the rip current. Yeah. And then Lloyd State Park in South Dartmouth. Okay. And then West Island Beach in Fairhaven. And I'm down there for meetings all the time. I'm like, I'm going to have to kind of like wait. Take a long lunch break. Yeah, take a and long so lunch what, break. Yeah. What website could people go to to find? So actually, Boston uh, Magazine oh, okay. is where the 100 beaches came up. And they, and actually, I, it was literally pages and pages. And underneath it says about parking. It's at, in all of, almost That's all wonderful. of them were wheelchair accessible. Great. Um, it says how much the parking is, how many parking spots are there, what amenities are there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Boston Did Magazine you... had, like, an amazing, amazing list. That's wonderful. And it was just, and it was, of course, it was Massachusetts, but it was, it was a very, just like, you know, from a tourist standpoint, you could see that there was oh, yeah. public pi parking, private. Yep, that's great. How much it costs for parking, if there's food there, if there's yeah, bathrooms Yeah, it's good to know there. if there's food there and bathrooms. Yeah, yeah, bathrooms. And then I seat. saw something on Facebook, um, and I don't know if it was an invention or, or something, or it's been around a long time, but it was some kind of ramp onto the beach yeah. where the wheelchair person... Ashland State Park has one. Right? Could yeah, go Ashland's right onto the beach yep. instead of... I don't even know what they would do if they couldn't. Right. So that's a wonderful thing. And I didn't know if it had, if you went this certain length and then you could, how do you maneuver it so you keep so, going? So it's interesting. Ashland State Park has one of those. Mm -hmm. So it's right in our neighborhood. You can definitely get to it from the parking lot. It's all wheelchair accessible. There is a ramp and there's rails. Oh, okay. So, and actually the wheelchair, because I walked down the ramp before, yeah. Yeah. the wheelchair can go all the way in the water. Well, that's that's what I was hoping. Yeah, and some you've seen actually that'll have a chair, so the person in the wheelchair could transfer on a chair and then be lowered into the water. So I mean, it, which is amazing. I mean, yeah. like it's, it's that should be. Yeah, yeah that's and and actually it was interesting. Most of the Massachusetts beaches were wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. beaches, not water. 
I mean, I should clarify that. And that's so. what I'm trying to figure out. Because yeah. if they can get, if a person in a wheelchair yep. can get onto the beach, yep. how do they maneuver in the sand? Right. That's what I'm And they told. can't. I mean, I've, I've pushed to, many of wheelchairs. Yeah. And the sand would be really difficult unless you so get one of those So someone needs to big, invent a sand wheelchair. Yeah. I mean, I've seen stuff with big big wheel. Could have scoops. Like, yeah. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm inventing it in my right. head. Right. Like Yay. 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 So, but anyway. Okay. So the, the corner office experts say that there already is a sand wheelchair. I'm so glad to hear Perfect. that. Perfect. And then you could roll right into the water, obviously, it, yeah. on a beach that had a slow grade. Yes. <laughs> so. All right. So call us if you have a favorite beach you want us to talk about or you want to tell us. Yep. Email us. Um, so my personal favorite, I think, well, is in Hawaii. So that's um, not really local. Um, but after that, it would have to be Duxbury. Yeah, that's and that's really beautiful. that's really more about my memories yeah. of it than anything else. Yep. And then I think the third, my third favorite, um, probably would be it would either be Cranes or um, that other one you mentioned, which I can't. Singing Beach. Singing Beach. Singing yeah. Beach. Because your feet, it's kind of uh, yeah, cool. Crane, uh, Singing Beach is very beautiful. It's very. Private. Yeah, I think that's I mean, why it, it's really pretty. I mean, yeah. like Good Harbor is beautiful, but it gets very crowded. Right. You know. But... Yes, exactly. And I, I, I like Rockport because I like. Right. I, oh, I'm I love the a, rocks. I'm not a sand. I'm not I mean, a sand. And sand's fine, but right. I like to swim and I right. like to hike around on the rocks, out right. on the jetty, and all that. Yes. So, yes. like I would say, Rockport was my favorite ocean beach, which is right. not a beach; it's a rock. Right. <laughs> and then I, you know, I have to say, I, I love our beaches in Hopkinton all summer long, all yeah. winter long, yeah. Yeah. on my horses, and biking, you can swim, walking, swimming in the lake, yeah, in, in the water. I mean, in the reservoir. And love it. If there is no motorboats, uh, right? In, and I in haven't Hopkinton seen, Ashland, I yeah. haven't seen the goose poop problem that we have had no, previously. I don't know. This year. I haven't seen as many Canada geese. You remember, you remember, well, you know what gets rid of them? And this is a funny, one of my friends who's a landscaper told me about it. Grape soda. Really? You put that in the water? No, just on the beach, which would be sticky or in grass. It repels geese. Well, but I haven't seen as many Canada geese flying over us this year. So there's something different about this year in terms of Canada geese. I don't know what it is. But I'm grateful they're really pretty, but they're messy. Yeah, you guys can go to beaches. We don't don't, don't mingle with the humans. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, and don't forget to stock up on grape soda, um, <laughs> we are, we'll be back to talk about alcohol versus marijuana in terms of teenage brains yes. and impairment. See you in a couple minutes. So we had, we were able to do a lot of preliminary work in the summers we spent together at her farm in Maine. But in the final stages, she had gone to live in a series of care facilities. So here she is in her not very large room in a wonderful... Welcome back. So this segment is about the comparison of alcohol use to marijuana on the teenage brain. Yeah. Neither is awesome, actually, yeah. for, for brain development. Yeah. And we know that the brain um, doesn't finish developing until age 24, 25. Right. So anything you're doing to a teenage, to a brain, right. 
before age 24, 25, when it's finished developing, yeah. is going to affect its development, clearly. Well, it's interesting. So it's kind of the same section of the brain that um, sex and, and, and... Hippocampus? Yeah, hippocampus. Yeah. So, so eating, drinking, and having sex, if you use drugs, particularly for someone who's under 24 years old, um, then they don't have those boundaries. So... You know the cortex advice. So, like, there are certain things. So, is this that a negative use. or a positive? I'm not sure where you're going with this. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's well. That's why it's so enticing, and why when they so try the, the it, the inhibitions are gone. Right. So yeah. when they try it, they they lose a lot of the the things that we have. So in our cortex advice, listen deeply, have patience, set respectful boundaries, innovate, create, take the long view. Those are our cortex how our cortex works but if we start using drugs or alcohol those get so really inhibits inhibited our those, ability those to sections. innovate yeah. create yeah yeah take so, a long and, view and particularly so children, it's more their brain still forming yeah yeah so their brain is still building and they're building cells i mean and those are complex brain functions huge so brain, you're yes. losing the complex brain function yes. because of this um effect on the hippocampus right the other thing and it I literally read, hacks the brain yeah i mean well, it, it you know and then a child or a teenager that uses either of these types of substances yeah. then it tells the brain oh it's the same thing as sex that same thing as eating the same thing as drinking water that the drug or the yeah, alcohol so i mean that's why it's so scary so they think it's essential to their existence right right yeah. so they have that craving not so much as an adult would because an adult says okay well and the problem is is by rewiring that brain or hijacking the brain as an adult those those synapses are already built yeah. so it's harder as an adult to resist drugs and alcohol as well sure. so that well that the synapse is a pathway in mm -hmm. the brain so if your synapse has formed yep. with the pathway preset by the drug use abuse of, or yeah. the alcohol abuse yep. then when you get a certain feeling yep. then that leads to a craving which leads to a behavior yes. because you've already made that pathway right, right. and okay. then there's all the stuff that goes along with yeah. drinking and yeah. all of that so yep. that's risky behavior yeah so here what i found in medical news today study uh linking marijuana used to greater risk of psychosis yes and they're talking about bipolar yeah. symptoms later on. Yeah. Marijuana use linked to bipolar symptoms. I had not heard that before. Yeah. I had heard paranoia. Yeah. Um, but that that alarms me. Right. Um, and drug is far far worse than cigarettes for right. cardiovascular health. Oh, absolutely. I had a, a dear friend in college who I have to say had a bad habit of smoking. I think every day. Yeah. And when the next, and half. I hadn't seen him. No, he didn't, not around me, but I, I, so I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. And when I did see him, uh, maybe five years after, four years after, he told me that he had lymphoma yeah. and that he had been dealing with lymphoma. And if you think about it, anything you bring into your Smoke. lungs that irritates Smoke. your lungs, either <laughs> yeah. cigarettes or alcohol, I mean, not cigarettes, cigarettes or marijuana, right. is still gonna have that smoke effect on your lungs, which need right. to be kept moist and warm right. so well, if you're you taking drying out, it out so there's flange in the lungs yeah. in the pockets in your lung that filter out things that you're not supposed to have in your lungs so if you clog them Makes up you want to breathe then you're going to get all kinds of stuff but so pot short-term effects altered senses seeing brighter colors altered sense of time changes in mood impaired body movement difficulty with thinking and problem solving impaired memory which if they're driving a car delusions and psychosis those right. are all short-term effects right. right and then the long-term effects are you know they say use some marijuana showed a dis a significant decline in general knowledge and verbal ability equivalent to four iq points so that thinks of what dumb so and dumber between the or yeah teach and teen years and early adulthood. So right there, yeah, just by doing that prolonged use, right? You know, prolonged, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, the other thing I've got is um, cannabinoids, which are the active compounds in marijuana, could help prevent migraine. Right. You know, so there are some benefits. Why that's right. why you and have nausea, the medical. And I mean, there's the no medical marijuana. Medical, yeah. There's very, I mean, cancer patients in all, all the years I dealt yep. with cancer patients. Yep. The, you the know, nausea. marijuana would definitely help with the nausea. Yeah. You know, I tried to. Pain. I got one from a friend to give to my mom when she was going through chemo. Yeah. And I said, Mom, if you know, I've heard if you smoke this. And yeah. She, I am not 
that's cool. Yeah, I can see your mom. Yeah, she'd right, be no, like she, horrified. Didn't, she didn't like that, but I was trying to help. So, <laughs> yeah. So then another one here. Um, so in this other study, um, Kent Hutchison, Department of Psychology and Neuroscience, is talking about um, studies going back years. One study will report marijuana use is related to a reduction in the volume of the hippocampus. Yes. So the hippocampus isn't. It's, the it's enlarged developed. hippocampus means joy, creativity, yeah. you know, peace and of mind. I mean, yeah. And then the next study comes around and says marijuana use is related to changes in the cerebellum. So there's no consistency. And that's why well, it's hard to figure out what exactly is happening. Right. Clearly something is happening you know, that, that, that makes people feel good and relaxed. Right. But what is that doing to the brain is what we're talking about. Well, and just to play on stereotypes a little bit, you and I grew up in a generation where people use pot pretty <laughs> readily. And you think of it, oh, well, they didn't show up to work or they're kind of lazy or they don't get things done. <laughs> and, and not to, you know, cast stereotypes, but there are certain behaviors that are associated right. with marijuana yeah. use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right, well, the surfer, you know, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So anyway, <laughs> right. go there. Go to so, the beach. Yeah, yeah go there. That, well, right, it's all related. <laughs> yeah, the hacking all, and, well, so that's what I was laughing it's about. It's hacking the brain. Um, so gray matter um, is the tissue that consists of nerve cells, yes. nerve cell bodies. White matter is the deeper brain that's got the myelinated nerve fibers, branches protruding. The, so that's where the synapses are. Yep. So it's affecting both of those things. Yep. Um, so you're, you're affecting brain function. Alcohol, we've known it's bad for the brain for decades, right. but they haven't known much about marijuana because it's a relatively new right. thing. Um, well, and it, it's alcohol been illegal, use, so how do you study it? You right, know, right. And here, are, you know. this study has alcohol use in adults who have been drinking for many years. Yep is a reduction of gray matter volume as well as a reduction right. in so it affects well, gray matter and we, white matter alcohol did induce dementia I mean, oh the yeah frontal lobe. i mean the dope you know so there's all kinds of things that right. that go along with that abuse right. and i mean i think you know we're not one like my friend dr ruth pody i was going to ask her to call in tonight but she's seeing patients that yes good and she has a substance abuse clinic yeah she will call in sometime and she adamantly believes that nobody under 24 should ever touch alcohol or drugs or cigarettes for that wow. matter. cigarettes are right in that and she says yeah. you know once you get beyond that age yeah then you know like it you learn how to use it in moderation and you deal with it and things like that mm -hmm. so Wow. You know, but it's, it's, so. I was afraid of it when I was a kid. I mean, like to me, I, I never tried it, but I, I was afraid of it. Like to me, like putting smoke in my lungs. My grandfather died of lung cancer yeah, when right. I was so. six years old. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, you put smoke in your lungs. And I know there's other ways to right. use marijuana, but you know, like to me, that is a very scary thing to put any kind of smoke into your body. So here's a, I totally agree. Here, and I, actually, I was the kid in high school who would break the cigarettes that my friends would Oh, have, yeah. So. Me too. You shouldn't be doing that. Yes. Me, kind of, well, that's kind of why we get along. Yeah. I meant well. I was right. very obnoxious, too. Yeah. My friends were so like, oh, I, my God, Lisa. I'm yeah. just trying to help. Yeah. So then um, here's a study from New Zealand that was conducted by Duke University that showed people who started smoking marijuana heavily in their teens and had ongoing marijuana use lost an average of eight IQ points between 13 yeah. and 38 lost mental abilities did not fully return in those who quit. So yeah. even if you quit as an adult, the damage you've already done. fried your brain. Yeah. So, not good. Well, you remember that great Nancy Reagan, this is your brain, this Just, is your brain on I know, I know. The the, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, it is. I mean, you're yeah. kind of, I mean, Crying. why you have those effects on your brain is it alters yeah. the way your brain is functioning. So, right. You know what I mean? So when you alter something, so mm -hmm. take gas that you put in your car. If you put crappy gas in your car, it's going to run bad. <laughs> so sorry about all my analogies tonight. But, you know. <laughs> now I'm worried about my car. Yeah, yeah it does. So, Where am I buying my gas? I don't know. That's another thing. Where like is the you, gas? I don't know. Yeah. It's another conversation. Right. right. So, so right here. So here is... Um, well, the other thing that's happening is the marijuana is getting stronger than it was it is, yeah. when it first came out. The rise of THC in marijuana has well, increased steadily yeah. over the past few decades for a person who's new to marijuana use. Right. This is an exposure of higher THC levels with a greater choice chance of a harmful reaction. Higher THC levels explain the rise in emergency room visits yeah. involving marijuana use. It well, used I mean, to it be that it would just kind of calm you down and zone right. you out. 
apparently. But it, now it really seems like that people are going into the hospital because they're right. having whatever reaction. Well, they say you can't overdose on marijuana, and yes, you can. I mean, you can get sick to your stomach, violent vomiting. <sighs> yeah. um, you know what I mean? Dizziness. You know, obviously disorientation. Um, some people can get, you know, seizures. So yep. there's a Ooh. lot of things yep. that. And then you know, here, sorry, it's, it's oh go go yeah. So here, the popularity of edibles. Yeah. also increases the choice chance of harmful reactions yeah. edibles take longer to digest to produce the high so they may take more because right. they don't think they're getting the yeah. high they're yes. going to take more what... and then they have the the dangerous results higher thc levels may also mean a greater risk for addiction yeah if they're regularly exposed yeah. to high doses so most people i think you know in the olden days didn't get addicted to marijuana some did right but now with this higher level of thc yeah. that effect on the body and as you're saying the, the synapse connections yeah. and that pathway they need that feeling yeah. again and so yeah. that's a very difficult thing other health effects breathing problems obviously because it's affecting the lungs higher risk of lung cancer yeah Increased heart rate. It yeah. raises your heart rate for up to three hours after smoking. Yeah. May increase the risk of heart attack. Yeah. Problems of, with child disease, development yeah. during and after pregnancy. I hope people aren't smoking while they're pregnant, but if that's yeah. an addiction, then it's hard to not do yeah. that. Yeah. And then uh, intense nausea and vomiting, like you were saying. Yeah. It's called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. Right. Yuck. So it's a regular size <laughs> cycle of yeah. nausea, vomiting, dehydration, requiring medical attention, um, temporary hallucinations, paranoia, schizophrenia. Yikes. Yes. Um, so, and then there's the secondhand smoke. Well, so I think they're both equally bad. Right. Um, and I think that we haven't noticed much about marijuana to this point. Right. So if anything, try right. not to right. abuse before... Right, um, and they say it's, and we should talk about. They say it's not addictive, but it is. It addictive. is, and we have we have a half a minute. Yeah, we do have a half minute. So, so think before you drink. Yeah, don't drive drunk. Yep, nothing before twenty four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and especially, you know, consider the risks. Yep. Um, versus the benefits. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, thanks yeah. for joining us. Sorry. It's we, we have, have 45, 45 seconds. seconds. Oh, my God. Okay, so. <laughs> don't drink. Don't, <laughs> go to the beach. Go to the beach. Don't drink and drive. Be careful with politics don't. because it makes you want to drink. <laughs> or go to the beach. Oh, or go or to do, the beach. Yeah. yeah. Just go to the beach. You yeah. Know? I know. <laughs> Look online to find a good beach and go there. Yeah. That's our advice. And relax. And it's that, better than drinking that for more marijuana. Relaxing. Yeah. And it won't affect your health except you'll feel better. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That's our advice. Yes. <laughs> See you next week. See you next week. Have Thank a you. Great week. <laughs>